folks. Welcome back to the Dumb Act. And this is Chris once again. Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris White After. This is Chris in central Pennsylvania. And that oak over there on the side there is Marco Janssen van Rendsburg. Uh, How's it going, Chris? Pretty well, <laughs> pretty well. Thank you. Cold this side. We're in Italy at the moment, so it's, uh, it's pretty cold. Yeah, I'm having a hard time believing it's cold. I'm, you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm going to put it up for the viewers very quickly here. Here's a photograph of Marco in Italy with um, some of his teammates. And um, notice that they're wearing jackets and uh, a lot of South Africans got umbrellas. I'm not really sure what an umbrella does in the snowstorm. But anyway, um, but look at Marco's footwear there. Um, he's uh, not exactly dressed well for snow season. And let me just pull this other picture up here. That that's there. That's the there. You can see better. There's a little something wrong with that footwear. And um, whoever was who's that with you there? He's got socks on and flip flops. Anyway, so apparently that that winter weather isn't phasing Marco Janssen van Rensburg, is it? <laughs> so there's a there's a reasoning behind that. I'm not I'm not that stupid. So we were lying in our hotel rooms, and the oak next to me with the uh, with the flip flops and the socks on uh, is Jean Ray Rudolf. He's one of uh, my teammates. Uh, he's my teammate now, and he used to be one of my teammates when I was uh, still at the Pumas. And um, we checked out the window, and we saw it was snowing. And obviously, we, being a bunch of guys from Bloemfontein, we're not really used to the snow. So we just quickly jumped up, put our flip-flops on, and went outside. That's when the, they took the picture. So I didn't really go out walking out in the snow with my uh, flip-flops on, but uh, uh, the, the photo evidence on Facebook seems to prove otherwise. Well, to be fair, I didn't get this from Facebook. I got it from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, you mentioned the Pumas. Before we get any, any discussion about this weekend and, and what's going on with you, um, boy, the Pumas won the Curry Cup. Um, I would be excited, except that they beat the Griquas, and I was really pumped for the Griquas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they had a hell of a, one hell of a season under coach Jimmy Stonehouse uh, uh, the last year. Um it's just they've, they they really worked hard for a whole couple of years, and it uh, just seems to have worked out for them. Um, that that happened before I joined the Cheetahs. I know it's a bit of a sore point in this specific <laughs> camp because the the it, it's a sort of the game that shall not be named type of thing because of, uh, the the Pumas uh, beat the Cheetahs in the semi final of that Curry Cup, and it was a little bit a little bit of an upset, and everyone's uh, still a little bit. Uh, beat up about it so we don't really mention that there's a bunch <laughs> of uh, guys in this squad that used to play for the pumas so it's sort of an un unspoken event <laughs> yeah. well i actually cover that game live because i do play by play and color commentary and <laughs> and it was a heck of a finish i'll have to say that the game at bloemfontein uh, i don't know how the cheetahs uh we yeah. we won't go into i don't know how they squandered that game and that where you see said it was before your arrival to the cheetahs this time around but yeah. uh a lot has happened a lot of team is that team is all over the place now as you mentioned some playing for the cheetahs uh, also Vili engelbrecht now playing for the stormers um actually yes. i'm kind of happy about that myself as a stormers fan but Anyway, yes. uh, so hey, listen. Um, when last we spoke, um, you were you're you're still with Rugby ATL, I believe, and you were with Rugby ATL then. And uh, we we did an interview. Also saw you on the ground down there several times in Atlanta. Are you still with Rugby ATL? We'll be back this season, which begins in a few weeks. No, no, unfortunately not. No, I won't be back. I'm uh, I'm in the Cheetahs now. For, I signed a two year deal, so I'm in Bloemfontein at the Cheetahs for the foreseeable future. Um, I had a hell of a time in Atlanta uh, for two seasons. First season, obviously, um, came so close. We lost the uh, we lost to the Guiltinis in the final 2021, and then last year uh, sort of was a hit and miss um, season for Rugby ATL. We also just fell short um, in one of the knockouts before the before the playoffs. So it was a uh, one hell of a ride. But I'm back. I'm back in South Africa for the foreseeable future. Well, I guess um, I, I'm going to have to dis consider whether I'm going to go back to Atlanta to cover games this year. I mean, uh, if, if Mumpson's not there, I'm definitely not going back. I'll have to talk to him and see if he's still going to be in Atlanta. <laughs> oh, no, he's, uh, he's, he's there. He's there for the long run. 
Okay. All right. As, just, far, as, as far as I know. <laughs> all right. Just check it. No, but I, I tell you what, uh, one of the, you know, look, um, I think a lot of us enjoy high scoring games, but one of the best uh, matches I've ever been to, and I've been to test matches, spring box, you know, teams around the world, World Cups, many World Cups. And one of the, really, honestly, one of the most enjoyable games I went to was that championship game for the Eastern Conference against Rooney down there in Atlanta. You guys won 10 to 9 late in the game. That was, that was a yeah. heck of a defensive struggle out there. And as a hooker, you definitely played a role in keeping things under control. That was tough. Yeah, I must say that was one of the one of the best victories of my life. I must say it was so rewarding. Uh, back then, we also had a real tough season. Um, obviously, Atlanta being sort of a new team in the league, uh, nobody really uh, knew what to make of us, and we were sort of the underdogs going into that whole season. And I think we proved a lot of guys wrong, and we really put our put our name on 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 being part of. Uh, the contenders for for the MLR championship uh, every year running because they saw that you can with a good defense, a good kicking game, uh, and a good uh, set piece you can get far. And uh, we really, yeah, that was a tough game, cheapers. No, it really was. It was, and it was quite an exciting game too. A, a pretty decent crowd out there, a nearly a sold out uh, stadium there at Life University, which is an interesting setting. Yeah. But quite, quite an experience. I'm, I'm glad you had a good time with Atlanta. Um, my time uh, being associated with that, that one season in particular, and that season was really exciting for me too. Um, a lot of personal expense to travel to Atlanta, but it was worth it to, to see uh, you guys. Put on, yeah. You guys put on a good program there. So. Listen, I was going to ask you. Look, you're 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 not on the on the side of uh, the the uh, low side of the twenties here. You're not an old 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 gray guy yet. Uh, so you're kind of in the middle there right now when it comes to rugby players. So I was going to ask you, what's it like to play with the with the legends like Ruan Pinar and Franz Franz Sten? But they're not playing. What's going on there? That's two weeks in a row they're not there. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for saying that I'm not the not <laughs> the, the gray the gray silver fox yet. I do feel I do feel that front row is peak at like 30, 31. So maybe I'm only in my prime right now. So uh, I keep telling myself that in any way. So, but I still feel good. Still keep going, keeping up with the young boys. So uh, happy to do it. Um, yeah, I must say um, it's been we've been learning so much from the from the senior guys in the team. Unfortunately, they both out with injuries. They were going to travel with, and uh, this time around. Uh, and then Ruan Pinar got an injury literally two days before we had to fly out. And uh, France had a, a struggled with a hamstring um, injury that he picked up the previous tour uh, in December when we played against Poe uh, from France. So he he was going to make it. He was originally in the in the squad to make it, but also pulled out last minute. But luckily, luckily we've got we've got some young, exciting guys coming up. Uh, that'll uh, hopefully uh, prove prove themselves in the big games. Well, speaking of that, there is no bigger game for the Cheetahs right now than Sunday against uh, Section Section Palois. I think that you're playing against in a home game, yeah. uh, not in Bluffentain, but at uh, Stadio Sergio Franchi in Parma, Italy. Um, uh, that, that's for the front office to get into. I suspect it has something to do with the, the cost and expense and the travel back and forth. But but it is kind of odd to see your home game in Italy, is it not? So the so the reasoning behind it is uh, we're only an invitational side in this competition uh, for the time being, uh, which means that we won't get a home game in Bloemfontein yet. Um, we hope to obviously um, uh, beat uh, Section Polos uh, on Sunday, and then we'll make it through to the to the top sixteen, and then which would probably cement our place to be invited again and hopefully become a permanent part of this competition. Well, I think that's a critical part of this that um, folks need to understand is that uh, the Cheetahs, who were uh, part of the Pro 14, uh, along with, uh, of course, the Southern Kings, which don't exist anymore, sadly, but the Cheetahs, uh, they um, they were, I don't want to say dumped, but uh, those two South African sides, which really proved the proof of concept because the whole the whole question was, could South African sides play in the Northern Hemisphere? Would it work? Would it, and some people are like, yeah, it's easy. It's the same time zone. You just go back and forth 12 hours. But still, you know, you know as an athlete and as a person who travels, uh, that, that's an easy thing to say. But 12 hours of flight and then getting there and prepping and uh, even if you have a bye week in between can be a challenge. But but the Cheetahs particularly, the the, the, the Kings didn't do so well. <laughs> but the Cheetahs uh, proved that the proof of concept that that could be done. And then, well, congratulations, Cheetahs. You did a great job. Thanks for being part of Pro 14. Now, 
Now we're going to have URC and you're no longer welcome. So <laughs> they invite the Stormers and the Bulls and the Sharks and the Lions in there. So I think this is a great opportunity for cheated fans who kind of feel a little bit cheated as they've not seen anything like this in a couple of years. Yeah, it's been tough. Uh, obviously, me coming in uh, towards the end of 2022, uh, I wasn't really part of those uh, those seasons where they obviously got dumped out of Super Rugby first and they got dumped out of uh, out of Pro 14. Um, and then they went the whole time, uh, probably a period of more than a year, year and a half, that they, they didn't really know in what competition they were playing. Will they be... Will they get paid? Will they this? Will they that? Because there's no competitions to play in 12 months and only play one curry cup. Uh, it's it's tough. Uh, it's tough psychologically on the on the gentlemen and on the staff and everyone surrounding uh, the whole franchise, obviously working behind the scenes to get competitions and people promise you things and then it doesn't happen. So being in this competition really means a hell of a lot to, uh, to the union and I think to the whole uh, city of Bloemfontein because obviously they want to see their team and I must say uh, Bloemfontein Cheetahs fans must rank up up there when it comes to fanatics uh, I must say they are crazy about rugby and they're obviously very involved so they they are really happy to see us in European competition and really want to see us doing well. Well, uh, you speak of the Cheetahs fans. Uh, that's definitely the case because um, I have a number of viewers who are like, all the time giving me a hard time because I never had a Cheetahs jersey until last last fall. And so, where's your Cheetahs jersey? Because I'm always wearing Stormers or Bulls or or um, Lions or not Lions, but uh, Sharks jersey. So the other thing too is that um, I started a TikTok channel just to do you know summaries of games and do live streams because you can't do that on YouTube. They'll hit you with, when music plays the stadium, you get a copyright claim. So I started a TikTok yeah. channel, which I j just started, and um, I, I put up the results of the game last week unfortunately 2017 i thought you guys could pull that one out it was a tough break but um the cheetahs were trailing way behind the the bulls summary the bulls were a lot more bulls fans and i mentioned to one of my viewers who's a cheetah fan and suddenly the numbers started changing the cheetah views started yeah. going up and now now i have more cheetah views on my videos than i had on, than i had on the bulls so obviously a lot of dedicated cheetah fans there so last week that game was kind of tough i mean uh, you guys are on the road and um you, you came back took the lead and it just kind of got away from you late there in the game cheap as your uh, last week's game it was such a tough game and uh, watching the game back uh, on on tv or on our video reviews and stuff um, it doesn't look like it, but the ball was soaking wet um, on the on the field. Um, it was raining the whole week before. It was it was bad. I think I only saw the sun once in seven days, so it wasn't great. Um, so you can't really see, and it's difficult to judge as a as a spectator. I know there there were a bunch of harsh comments on our Facebook page and on uh, even some of the but personally some of the guys got messages and texts and stuff um and it it, it, it it they were hard on us um some of the fans uh, but you couldn't really see how how wet that ball was and how slippery the conditions were and it was cold not to make any excuses of course but um it's it's easy to to look from the outside and criticize but actually being out there it's away from home it's a tough game it's um it's really something out of our comfort zone. Some of these guys that played haven't even been outside of South Africa in their whole life. So it's uh, traveling away from home, away from your family, your support network. It, it is tough. Uh, and again, I, I don't want to make any excuses for the game because we were in it. We were in it the whole game. Um, unlike the first round where they totally blew us out of the park in the first half, uh, we brought it back the second half beautifully. But in, in the first half, they really ran away with it. And I think credit to the coaching side for this side we took our learnings from the first game we knew we had to uh, step up our kicking game and our chase game especially uh, obviously your kick is only as good as his chase so we need we, we knew uh, what their strengths were and we knew what they were going to come out uh, come after us for and um, i think we fixed it during the week we played uh, we played that sometimes we played really good rugby kept the ball for a couple of phases really defended uh, really well um unfortunately three uh, three points that stuff, but uh, uh, I'm never satisfied with a <clears throat> excuse me with a loss. But cheap, <coughs> excuse me, losing with three points away from home, tough uh, situation. Yeah, uh, definitely some good things that we can take out of it. Um, hopefully, we can apply those things uh, this weekend. Well, listen, uh, 
I have to say, uh, Marco, I, I don't take that as an excuse at all. I mean, I didn't see you making excuses. I just see you just you relating the facts. I mean, you, you you yourself have traveled around the world to play rugby. You know what it's like to shift. I mean, you know what it's like to be hot in South Africa, but but uh, that brutal humidity in Atlanta is something after have to adjust to. You, you learn how to deal that. Now you're out there in flip-flops in the snow. I mean, it's it's one thing, it's another. It's uh, But as you mentioned, a lot of these guys have never dealt with that. It's the first time that they're dealing with something like that. Um, so, so I, I don't take that at all like that. And I think the diehard Cheetah fans should be more understanding. It's a shame that, that people got uh, nasty notes. That's unnecessary. Listen, I was disappointed, um, but I was impressed at the effort that was put in. Uh, the thing for me with the Cheetahs is that historically, when I watched the Cheetahs back in Super Rugby and, and Curry Cup, uh, I always knew I could turn in and see the Cheetahs game because they'd score 45 or 70 points in a game. They might lose, but they'd score 75 points. It was always a high-scoring game, and this was a much lower affair, and so uh, it was much more controlled. Uh, a bit disappointment, but no, I don't, I don't take it that way at all. So <laughs> let me ask you this question away from, away from that game before we get to this weekend's game. So jean Jerry Rudolph. He looks like a tough guy. Is he a really nice guy, or is he is he is he, is he a guy that you just don't want to run into on the street because it might go badly? <laughs> no, he's a, he's the nicest guy you'll meet. He's a he's a really lovely guy. I've actually known him uh, since I was three years old. My mom and his mom are best friends. They went to university together, so we've known each other forever. Um, and he is uh, he's off the field. He's a uh, he's a really nice guy. But being, uh, I can say this because I've been his teammate and I've been uh, on the other side uh, playing against him. Uh, he's a he's an absolute a hole on the field. I must be honest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's really annoying. He's he's one of those guys that you really want on your team and not against you because he's a he's a really good a fetcher of the ball. So he's always on the edge of the law. So he's always busy and he's always working really hard. So yeah, I must say, really good guy off the field, really nice guy. But on the field, wouldn't want to play against him. Ollie's on the edge of the laws. It sounds like the entire England national team. I'm just saying. <laughs> Mario Toja. I'm not going to say no. anything. No, <laughs> you, no, you, no you, comment. Don't you get involved there. No comment. No comment. That's there for me. <laughs> All right. So this weekend, um, it's do or die. And um, as I said to you in, in our message last night, none of this die. It's, it's due time. Uh, are you guys up for this? I, well, I mean, that should be an obvious answer. You're up for it, but I mean, uh, it's 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 obviously you want to advance to the next round of this thing. Yeah, sure. So basically, as it stands at the moment, I think I think we're on five or six log points. And six. Section Polois, uh, Section Polois is on seven, I think. So basically, it's the last game for both of us um, before the round of sixteen. So it's it's either us or them that's going through to the round of sixteen. So. Uh, one would call it a do or die match, like I said last night. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do and not die. But uh, we had really had a, a good week of training. Uh, we had a long time. We we got in on Monday. Uh, no, we got in on on Saturday already. Um, so we've been here for a whole couple couple of days. Had a couple of good gym sessions, couple of good recovery sessions, and real good uh, sessions on the field. So I think we're really prepared. Um, yeah, we just before uh, uh, before the school. I we just came back from from our last heavy training session, and it went really well. Uh, good quality, good intensity in the cold. It's not snowing anymore, at least, but it's still uh, bloody cold. Um, so we had we had good training sessions this week, and I think we're fully prepared um, to take them on on Sunday. So tomorrow will be just the captain's run. So we'll have an early breakfast and then just go. Do the basics. The forwards will do their lineups. The backs will do some of their strike moves, and we'll do one or two moves, and then we're out of there. So tomorrow is going to be a chill day, and then we'll be ready for Sunday afternoon. Excellent. Well, you know, one of the things that I understand because uh, one of my viewers uh, and a person I've actually done for my meet and greets, I travel and I meet viewers. Um, done it in South Africa, done it in the UK. Uh, one of my view, uh, viewers from the UK, who's uh, Welsh but lives in England, so he's very confused. Uh, <laughs> he's, he, he told me he said, you know, the thing about the cheetahs is that it's hard to root against them because in Wales, among the South African sides, uh, apparently a lot of the Welsh have a soft spot for the cheetahs. I didn't know that. Um, I don't know if you felt that on the pitch from the from the from the spectators or not, but that's what he says. No, no, I must say I didn't really I didn't really get that because it was quite <laughs> hostile. Uh, that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, the I was um, I was playing with the bench that game, and we the bench that was literally two 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 rows ahead of the spectators. So they, if they wanted to, they could smack us at the back of the head or pull beer down our shirts. 
So if they wanted to, they, you know how they go. Yeah, yeah. Everything's always chirp, chirping in the back of your head. So uh, I, I wouldn't say. I, on the other side of the field, I saw one cheetah flag. So maybe it was just. <laughs> It was like just a just an orange speck in a in a sea of red. So um, I didn't really get that, but I must say the the whole the community uh, in Swansea they were really accepting of us and they really liked us there and um, everyone was very welcoming and very friendly. So uh, we had a good time there. Now the, the next this next uh, comment uh, you don't have to respond to, but then please answer the question. So the next comment is that uh, I'm I'm going to ask you if it's strange playing in Italy at a home game and what's the crowd like? It, it it's probably pretty small. I did see the game uh, when you were there and it was kind of small. But uh, before you answer that, I'm going to say I'm going to make the comment. Uh, it's not much different than a Curry Cup crowd. Oh, small. Anyway, so <laughs> anyway, yeah. What's it like there in Italy? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll I'll answer your question. I won't respond to that comment <laughs> that's what that's what i set it up for you don't have to respond to that comment yeah yeah that's bad anyway uh moving on uh i must say being the invitational side on this side this being our home pitch obviously there's few and far between cheetah supporters in italy um they don't speak much english here let alone afrikaans so um it was tough. There was like a handful, maybe friends or family of some of the coaches or some of the players that came out to watch us. But um, other than that, I think the Scarlet's uh, support staff lost uh, the last time around were more than our fans. So it was. <laughs> but I must say, obviously, it's nice playing and playing in front of a big crowd. And um, but in the heat of the moment, when you're out between the four white lines and the adrenaline is pumping. Flip and you don't really you don't really um, realize until the play stops because uh, obviously it's just where you just play you just have to do what you have to do and the end of the day the guy in front of you it's you versus him and you have to tackle him and there's no not much thinking about the crowd then um, but uh, yeah like I said uh, it is good to play in front of a home crowd but uh, it, it doesn't really make a difference uh, we just have to go out and play our, be our best. No, I think it's a great uh, way to look at it, but it definitely, you know, when you're when you're in a big stadium and there's thousands of people there, it definitely puts a new a different atmosphere, which is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's it was it was kind of weird. I mean, when I looked at the schedule, I was really excited to find out months ago that the Cheetahs were being invited. That was really cool to see. Uh, the lines uh, came up as well, of course, because they were in URC. But uh, I was really excited yeah. to see it. But um, then when I saw the home games were in Italy, I'm like, i got to think about this for a second. That seems kind of strange. By the way, um, I, just to let you know, I was just handed a red card. Uh, Sam Unko says that I was handed a red card for what I said about the current cup attendance. <laughs> Listen, um, I have a lot of issues with World Rugby officiating, Sam, so don't get me started right there. You think Rossi's upset? I'm upset. Anyway, <laughs> but seriously. So, I mean, what, what's it like, the reception there in Italy? I mean, uh, had, had you been to Italy before? By the way, just uh, for interest of full disclosure, I lived in Italy for two years, not too far from where you're at. I was up in Vicenza oh, yeah. with the Army for two years. What's it been like for you there? Oh, okay. Um, coming here for the first time, last time was because uh, we stayed in Palma both times, obviously, stayed in the same hotel. The first time coming here... Uh, um, it's it's difficult because the language barrier is tough. Like every now and then you'll get someone who speaks English, but uh, most of the time it's all Italian and and that's it. And obviously my Italian is, uh, is zero. So I, I now know how to say hello and goodbye and please and thank you, but that's about it. Um, so it's been, I think, uh, for me and for some of the guys that hasn't been here before, because um, this being my first time, well, previous tour was my first time it was a bit of a it was a bit of a um a culture shock for us i think and some of these guys with the uh, with the local cuisine uh, some of these guys are a bit full of nonsense um coming coming in from south africa only want to eat braai braai meat um so um it has been a bit of a shock a culture shock to some of the guys um and i must say but it's nice i like it i like the city i like uh, we stay pretty close to the sort of old town where all the cathedrals and all the old churches are. So uh, there's a, but the coffee shop and the gelato shop around every uh, flipping corner. Yeah, so it's nice going out. Uh, I like to see all the old buildings, a lot of the history and art, and obviously eating Parmesan cheese and Parma ham because we're in Parma, <laughs> so you have to. <laughs> and it's a good excuse to carb load on uh, pasta and pizza. So. Yeah, I must say I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, it, it is getting towards that uh, 
uh, uh, time of the tour towards the end where you start missing your wife and your kids and your family back home. So everyone every now and then gets a little bit scratchy with each, with each other, but that's that's just how it is. You bunch of guys, um, 30 odd oaks uh, in the same hotel, being in each other's space the whole time. That will happen, but we're a bunch of brothers. We sort it out. So there's no no nothing serious going on. But to answer your question, I'm enjoying Palma. Yesterday we had a really big snowstorm, and some of the guys saw snow for the first time in their life. So they were they were. <laughs> Filled with uh, child uh, with childish uh, delight wonder and they were, wonder. Yeah. They were building they they were building snowmen and running around the snow, throwing each other with snowballs. Because, uh, like I said, some of the guys saw snow for the first time in their life, as it uh, doesn't snow um, in South Africa hardly ever. Well, that's true. But I seem to find the snow every time I get well, not every time, but when I go to South Africa, it seems to happen. I was in Durban uh, a long time ago, and I well, about twenty some years ago, and I started that day down on the beach. Um, I had shorts on, and I I got in the car. I stopped for petrol, and I think in Peter Maritzburg or near there. Didn't get out of the car again. As I got up towards the Drakensberg, the weather came in. The temperature dropped precipitously, and it was a freak storm. And the snow was falling all over, and people were pulling off the side, and I'm like. Pfft. I mean, this is nothing, man. So I kept driving. I got up through Van Rienen's Pass, and I got to Joburg, and it dumped up there too. And I was near Santa, and I stayed like in a Holiday Inn Express or something, like, something a Holiday Inn, something like that. And, and I, I, I get out of the car, and there's a few inches of snow, several centimeters of snow on the ground. I walk into reception, and you should see the look on the, on the guy's face. He's like, sir, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. What's wrong? Uh, you know, it's snowing outside. I said, Yeah. I just came from Durban. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and then when I was in when I was in South Africa, <laughs> winter time at the end of winter there, just a few months ago in August, I arrived and it snowed frequently up in um, Pumalanga. I think had some snow in Limpopo and other places, and people were buried Crazy. snow. Well, people are blaming me for the snow. I didn't bring the snow. It's not my fault. You, you, br you brought it with you. <laughs> exactly. But I told him. I said, "Well, I didn't bring it with me. It's summertime where I came from. Now it's winter time. If it yeah. snows now, it's my fault yeah. because I'm coming to South Africa next week." <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, so, um, you know, I was looking forward to Curry Cup. I will be at the uh, Stormers and Bulls game at Loftus on the 18th of February. Uh, the other games are being played in Europe for URC, and uh, there is a re rescheduling of an Ulster game uh, against the Sharks on the 25th, which is close to the end of my trip. I'm going to try to make that, but that's down in Durban. Anyway, um, I looked at the Curry Cup schedule. It's Saro has not put that out yet, South African Rugby Union. And uh, one of my Cheetahs uh, supporters uh, was able to get a list from Cheetahs, but it turns out it's, it winds up being bogus. It's not accurate. They had you guys playing against uh, the Bulls at Loftus in February, and apparently it looks like Curry Cup's not going to start till March now. Uh, that's a huge disappointment for me because I want to be one of the few people that shows up and supports people at the game. So um, Curry Cup is coming up, I believe, in March. Uh, will we see you in Curry Cup, I assume, since you're under contract? Yeah, yeah, you will be seeing me. Uh, unsure about the date yet. It hasn't been confirmed, but the pre preliminary start date is around the 11th of March. It's uh, unconfirmed that it might change at a moment's notice, but I think we'll, it, it should start early early March. Um, yeah, you will be seeing me, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, I look forward to that. That's an, uh, another challenge on a domestic level. No doubt about it. And of course, it's the world's oldest uh, rugby competition, which people seem to lose sight of. And a lot of people in South Africa, well, a lot, but some people in South Africa have been rather dismissive of Curry Cup. And uh, particularly after last year when the, the Creek was and the, uh, and the uh, Pumas surprised everybody and got to the final. And I was quite the opposite. I mean, it was incredibly exciting. I mean, it's 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 great yeah. to see that those teams. I mean, the Crickets had not been there since 1970, and the Pumas had never been. So I was really never really, been there. Yeah. yeah, never been. And then they pull it off. But I was really excited. But um, you know, it's uh, I, I the dismissive attitude some people have taken towards it. I I, I take issue with that. I think that um, that the Curry Cup still can be a great competition, and for me, it's great to see a lot of players we don't see a lot of. For instance, I mean, you guys have an incredible fly half who had a great game in my view last week. Sia Masuku. I mean, a lot of people don't get see Sia. Um, I, I think that um, it's great to see players who have talent that we don't see otherwise. Yeah, sure, hundred percent. Yeah, it is. It is a bit. It is a bit of a bittersweet type of thing because. Obviously, you don't want you don't want the Curry Cup to ever go away because it's got so much history. And I just remember growing up, um, growing up in a small town, probably an hour and a half's drive from Cape Town up the west coast. Uh, we would drive we would drive to Newlands almost every second weekend to go watch the Western Province play in the Curry Cup, um, and it was sold out almost every game. Um, 
obviously a lot of things have changed with broadcasting and international competitions uh, that make you use your sort of uh, second tier team to play in the curry cup whereas you obviously prioritize your 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 uh, international competitions but it's still it's still a little bit sad to see the numbers in the crowd dwindling you obviously really want to get you only these days you only get real crowds when you play semis and finals so i would like to see uh people coming out and supporting their uh supporting their teams but obviously uh, times are tough at the moment man financially and the economy is not great and there's load shedding and you know all the, all, the, all the problems in south africa so what what I think, that's, this is just my personal opinion, is what I think is that it's just become too expensive. If you, as a family of uh, four or five, you've got three kids, you want to take them out to a game, you have to pay for parking, you have to pay for, for dinner, and whereas you can stay at home and, and stream it with streaming services these days being so good, um, especially in South Africa with DSTV, you get to stream, you get to, you don't even need to have uh, a cable, uh, as you call it in uh, in the states, you don't even need to have cable to watch it. It's not pay per view. You just uh, use use someone else's almost like you use someone else's Netflix uh, locking details that you're not supposed to, but uh, people still do it, and uh, they'd rather stay at home and watch it. You can still support your team, but uh, as a player, you would obviously like to see full crowds, and it's also nice to watch it on the TV and. Uh, and still see crowds and creates a whole environment um, that's different to obviously an empty crowd. No, absolutely. You know, and it's it's interesting because um, unfortunately, in, in my view, the URC final was marred by the government's decision uh, to limit the crowd, and they sold out what they could, what they were allowed to have. I, th- I remember it was about thirty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty thousand for that. that twenty-five stadium, thousand yeah, or so, yeah. Yeah, that stadium would have been full. I mean, it absolutely would have been full. If there was a lot of energy for the Bulls and Stormers final, which was pretty incredible. And it's good to see two South African sides get to the final, the first URC season. Pretty excited uh, about that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it was amazing. It was good to see. You know, because there's a lot of questions about that. You know, and to me, I thought that was very, very unfair. There was a lot of um, people looking down their nose in Europe about with these South African sides coming up there. And I don't know if it's because the 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 Kings did so poorly. They did very poorly in in, in Pro 14. They really did. I mean, I'm not picking on the Kings, and I suppose I could pick on them. They don't exist anymore. But but uh, they did poorly. But the <laughs> the, the well, who's going to complain, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah. but uh, but the Cheetahs held their own for a, a, a few seasons there. Um, so you know, there was a lot of uh, this. Why are we inviting these South these South African sides up here? But I mean, I think it's kind of silly because if you look at the the Welsh and the uh, and some of the other sides. They're, they're, and the, they're loaded with South African players. I mean, you know, <laughs> Dwayne Vermeulen is playing for Ulster. You know, come on. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, you might as well. You might as well just invite a whole South African team. Exactly. That's my point. Exactly. So look, I want to wrap up here shortly because you've got to get back to uh, enjoying the uh, pasta or, or you know, relaxing a little bit there. But. Um, so I think we look forward to see you in the Curry Cup. I'm, I'm just when that schedule comes out. So thanks for that kind of heads up around the 11th. Let us know. But uh, is there any any anybody we should look be looking at this weekend um, really closely in your game that's going to surprise us? Is it going to be one of the wings? Will it be Munir Hatsenbeg going to break free for a, a try or something like that? Or anything? Any predictions for the weekend other than I hope you're going to predict that you're going to win? Uh, yes, uh, I do. I do predict that. If I was a betting man. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've got a whole bunch of exciting backs. Uh, I think the team has been announced on social media, so I won't be giving away any secrets. Uh, but uh, I must say, Munir Hatsubir is definitely a guy to watch out for. Daniel Kassende. They were, uh, we've got a bunch of exciting backs, and we definitely... Uh, the Cheetahs sort of always pick a real fast back three that can really run and spread the ball and good under the high ball. So that's no different this time around. And obviously our forwards and uh, definitely just playing as a pack, we've really come into our own as a, even though I think uh, when we played uh, the Scarlets uh, last round, they were, they outweighed us in the pack by about a hundred kgs. Yeah, that, but, was, that uh, was huge. Big difference there. Yeah, they had a they had a bunch of big dudes in that team, but we still scrummed them. We still all own them all. So 
we've been that's really a part of the cheetahs game that we we pride ourselves on is the set piece and uh, and the malls and the scrums so definitely be looking out for the whole forward pack and then obviously when one of those quick wings uh, can get the ball in space that'll be great to watch and obviously like i said see how, like you said see masuku has been playing really well and he's got a He's got a cannon of a boots on him, so hopefully he can put up some good, uh, some good contestables, and we can get the ball back and play from turnover ball. Which, as you know, playing from turnover ball is one of the biggest sources of uh, of tries uh, in this competition or in any uh, competition for that matter. Is uh, the t- turnover ball? If we can capitalize on that, um, even make them make mistakes. If we're happy defending because we we trust our defensive system, so. We're really, really keen to go out there and just smash them to pieces. Well, the social media roster, as you mentioned, has been released, and it has Louis van der Vesthuizen starting at hooker and you coming off the bench. So here's my um, direction to you, Marco. Um, when you come off the bench, um, if the cheaters are behind, get them jazzed up and let's win this thing. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Will do. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, that's Marco Jansa von Rensburg. When last we spoke to him, he was with the Atlanta rugby ATL side, the Rattlers, down there in Major League Rugby. Now he's back uh, in South Africa, but in Italy at the moment, for the Challenge Cup, playing for the Cheetahs. And obviously, everyone that's here is a Cheetahs fan. I'm getting, I'm getting abused over here in the chat a little bit about it. Not saying enough things, nice things about the Cheetahs. But, Marco, thanks a lot. Bye-bye, uh, Donkey. It's a pleasure to chat with you again. And by the way, folks, you should know, this is what I love about rugby. Um, rugby players, it's not like the NFL or FIFA or something like that where almost all the players have got this big head and it's hard. To, they don't they don't engage with the fans. They're hard to get a hold of. Uh, rugby has always been a game where, you know, like I was at the, uh, at the, um, at the uh, Saracens Newcastle game that they did in the States when I first came back from Ethiopia, and Skalk Berger was sitting on the bench. He'd played, came out in the second half. I walked over and said, hey, Skalk. He's like, hey, I agreed to Malfurcons. I said, can I get a photo? Yeah, and we chatted for a second. And the reason I mentioned all that is that I reached out to you last night, and I don't know if you had your phone nearby, but within moments you responded and said, yeah, can, I, can we do it tomorrow? And, uh, and so here you are. So that's what I love about rugby. Rugby players are approachable, and they're really, uh, by and large, good people, except for those guys who play for England. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, Marco, thanks a lot. Uh, any final thoughts you want to share with, with uh, the folks who have uh, listened in tonight? Or today. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to say thank you for actually tuning in and keep supporting us um, uh, through thick and thin. Those are the greatest supporters that you can get. Uh, stick with us, and uh, hopefully, well, not hopefully, we'll pull it through tomorrow. It's going to be a tough one, but uh, if you watch and support from your side, that'll be great. Um, and yeah, just keep spreading the love for the cheetahs and our uh, beautiful brand of rugby that we play. So. Uh, enjoy the game tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Sunday. Enjoy the game, and I hope we can make uh, all the diehard supporters proud. Well, let me throw a couple comments in from the from the uh, audience here real quick. Uh, Nicholas Grove says, please tell Marco my brother-in-law is a Cheetah's lifelong supporter from the days of Helgard Mulla. Uh, I bought the poor guy a Cheetah's mug. Joking. He's a true sign, sign of a true sport. Anyway, and then um, the other one is that Nicholas says that uh, football is 90 minutes of acting uninjured rugby is 80 minutes pretending they're not injured (laughs) well that's pretty true (laughs) can't disagree with that anyway folks uh thank you very much appreciate it uh cheetahs fans spread the word let people know about this interview and uh, marco best of luck on sunday we'll be in touch and um i'm expecting a cheetahs win if we don't get one then i'm gonna send you a nasty note (laughs) (laughs) cheers thanks chris appreciate it all right, I'll let you drop off there, and I'll close up the stream. Okay, thanks a lot. Marco Jansen van Rensburg from Parma, Italy. Cheetah's uh, hooker there. And no, not the kind you find on street corner, but uh, the kind you find in rugby. <laughs> Oops, he's, there he goes. All right, so that's it, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, sorry for the short notice on this one, but I reached out to Marco last night. You know, I'm traveling next week, so I'm short on time, and the game is this weekend. The Cheetah's won't play in the Curry Cup, so it seemed like the ideal opportune time to get this interview. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to give us a like and a comment on the video if you don't mind, and let other folks know about it. So thank you very much. Um, uh, Kel Vong will Kelvin Gilbert says, Cheetahs for life. Okay, cool beans. Thanks a lot. All right, uh, I'll be in South Africa next week, folks, on Friday. I fly on Thursday. Looking forward to it. Uh, schedule's not completely firmed up yet. Got a lot of moving parts. Not like the last time where it was all locked down before I left. Uh, there will be some meets and greets uh, in the Western Cape, in possibly uh, in Howick and KZN, and certainly in Joburg and in Pretoria, as well as Giselle will be performing a concert in my honor um, in uh, Pretoria area and uh, some other events going on. So thanks a lot. 
And thank you all very much. Uh, we'll catch you a little bit later. Uh, well, in about an hour and 20 minutes for the news, if you want to catch that. Anyway, once again, here's Marco Janza van Rensburg and his teammates there in Parma, Italy. Uh, you know, Marco wearing no socks and flip-flops. <laughs> And uh, here he is, just in case you couldn't see it clearly, with Jean-Jerry Rudolph. <laughs> Look at those big snowflakes, man. Wow, 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 wow. Anyway, folks, that's it. We'll catch you uh, next time. Uh, actually, I should probably close this up with, uh, do I have it in here? I'm looking to see if I've got it. Yeah, I'll close it out with a Rugby Ascended opening. Cheers, everybody. See you for the news. <laughs>